Have you ever wondered why mouthpiece makers exist when there's Van Doren or Daddario? Or have you ever been curious about the advantages of handcrafted mouthpieces or what it's like to work one-on-one -on -one with a mouthpiece maker? If so, you're in the right place. My name is John Kurakawa, and today we're going to talk about the pros and cons of machine-made and handcrafted mouthpieces, with a bonus at the end of the video on how to work with a mouthpiece maker. First off, if you're a beginner or just getting started, buy a machine-made mouthpiece. Get a Phobes debut. It has a hand-applied facing that will make your life a lot better. Fellow clarinet YouTuber Clarinet Ninja has a fantastic video on student mouthpieces, and I would highly recommend you check it out. The link is in the description. Machine-made mouthpieces have been in existence for a long time, and some companies even toot the lack of hand workmanship as one of their best features. Up until 20 years ago, mouthpieces were made by vulcanizing rubber. Vulcanizing? No, not that kind of vulcanizing is the process of hardening rubber by treating it with sulfur at a high temperature. The problem with this process is that as the rubber cools, it often changes dimensions, resulting in a very inconsistent mouthpiece blank that was then finished by machine. This resulted in a very inconsistent product from mouthpiece to mouthpiece, hence the need to try many to find a good one. Robert Marcellus often told people that his mass-produced Melior mouthpiece was special and unique and that he had to try many to find a good one. CNC, or Computer Numerically Controlled Technology, is only 20 years old. And while it's accurate to a point and much better than vulcanizing, it's not magic. It can and does deviate. It can cut a mouthpiece blank much more accurately than before, but it's not a magic solution to replace mouthpiece craftsmen. Seriously, ask any double reed player out there if they would play reeds made on machines with no hand workmanship and enjoy the look of horror or disdain on their face. Now, I'm going to admit right up front that I have a bias, and that is towards handcrafted mouthpieces, except for three short periods during my career where I performed on a Van Dorn V13 and two M13 Liars, I have always performed on handcrafted mouthpieces. In grad school, I played a vintage Selmer HS Star reworked by Richard Hawkins. I then played handcrafted mouthpieces by James Pine, Dan Johnston, then Richard Hawkins again. And now for the last five years, mouthpieces by Ramon Woodkowski. I want to be clear though, I haven't been paid by any of these makers. Quite the contrary. They've all gotten a lot of my money for mouthpieces, and these opinions are my own. And this is truly just one person's opinion. Mine. I have heard amazing clarinet playing on machine-made mouthpieces, so I'm not judging anyone who picks one over the other. Choice is good, right? So how did I make the determination that I prefer handcrafted mouthpieces? <sighs> this is going to make some people mad. It's counterintuitive, but don't pick a mouthpiece solely for its sound. Think of a car. You might want to pick a car because it's a color you like, but is that color more important than the way it drives? The majority of my playing is as a principal clarinetist in an orchestra, but I also do a good amount of concertos, chamber music, and recital or solo work. For me, a good mouthpiece has to respond and articulate easily. It has to be able to play softly in the upper clarion and altissimo registers. It has to stay focused when playing loudly without biting or straining to hold the sound. And it must play in tune. If a mouthpiece has good response and blow through and plays in tune, then the sound will probably be in the ballpark and you'll have the flexibility to seek many different colors in the sound. If you pick a mouthpiece primarily for its sound and you can't articulate, have to bite and chew to get the sound started, or it plays out of tune, that's like picking a car because it's a hot candy apple red, but can't accelerate fast enough to get on the freeway. Sure, it might look nice, but does it function? In my 30 years of professional experience in every playing situation, handcrafted mouthpieces provide a superior driving experience. So there you go. My bias is clear and out in the open. Let's go to the pros of machine-made mouthpieces. Number one, machine-made mouthpieces are widely available. The fact that you can buy them off of Amazon speaks to this. 
There's a wide variety of models to suit many different preferences. Number two, the maturity of CNC, or computer numerically controlled technology, means these mouthpieces are generally consistent from mouthpiece to mouthpiece, meaning that if you need to replace one, it can generally be easier to find a similar mouthpiece. The same can't be said for mouthpieces that are vulcanized, molded, or cooked, for lack of a better term, as they tend to change dimensions as they cool, resulting in, a, again, a very inconsistent product. Pro number three, machine-made mouthpieces are often made by companies that also make matching accessories like ligatures and reeds to complement their mouthpieces. This creates an ecosystem, similar to what technology companies such as Sony, Microsoft, and especially Apple employ with great success. Number four, affordability. Machine-made mouthpieces are generally inexpensive, relatively speaking, although these prices have risen. I remember buying my first Van Doren 5RV for $60 back in the day when dinosaurs roamed the earth. So why bother with anything other than machine-made mouthpieces? Well, here are the cons in my opinion. Number one, consistency. Yes, mouthpieces made with CNC machinery are fairly consistent, but as I said before, they are still slightly different. Producing a mouthpiece in this manner also means there will be fewer gems or unique mouthpieces with special response and tonal characteristics. Con number two, material. I've heard more than a few clarinet players complaining that machine-made mouthpieces of a certain brand are causing silver-plated keys on their clarinets to tarnish. This is due to low-quality rubber. That company is moving quickly to rebrand and utilize another low-quality rubber with fancy marketing and ad copy, but at the end of the day, low-quality rubber does not a great mouthpiece make. Number three, durability. I know some players who have played a mouthpiece for many years and even a whole career and have no complaints. But I also know more than a few clarinet players who look at machine-made mouthpieces like disposable products and literally buy a new one every one to two years. Handmade mouthpieces are generally made of much higher quality material, carefully selected by the maker. And when they start to wear, as all mouthpieces do, you can send it to them for refurbishing, which is much cheaper than buying a new mouthpiece. A good mouthpiece craftsman will be able to maintain the original qualities of the mouthpiece you love and get it back to you as good as new or better. Number four, details. While a machine can be quite accurate at making a mouthpiece, it can't play test it as the best mouthpiece makers do or make the very fine adjustments that a mouthpiece craftsman can do. From this perspective, you could almost view machine-made mouthpieces as unfinished products. Yes, a CNC machine can hit the measurements as accurately as a machine can make them, but they can't make the fine adjustments a craftsman can do to compensate for the inconsistency in the material or, more importantly, the player's personal taste in terms of response and blow-through. So now, let's discuss the pros of handcrafted mouthpieces. Pro number one, quality. If you're working with a good mouthpiece maker who takes pride in their work, then you can be assured that the mouthpiece they send you to try will be their best work. A CNC machine has no such investment in your satisfaction. And the investment in your satisfaction of the company selling you that mouthpiece is to get your money. That's it. With the best mouthpiece makers, your mouthpiece is bespoke. That is, made to order. Think of this as the difference between eating a frozen dinner and a steak at a fine restaurant. In my experience, if a mouthpiece maker has hundreds of mouthpieces lying around to send you, they aren't selling a lot of them. Even worse, the mouthpieces they send you have probably been picked over and you're getting the rejects. A mouthpiece maker whose work is in demand will make the mouthpiece to order for you. Pro number two direct sales contact. If the mouthpiece you receive from the maker isn't exactly what you are looking for, you can contact them directly and seek their advice. They might advise you exchange it for a different model or send the mouthpiece back for some slight tweaking. The larger manufacturers usually don't offer such customized service, although one brand does have studios in a few major cities to assist you with this process. Even then, they can't work on the mouthpieces and adjust them for you, only provide guidance as to which models might be a good fit. A good maker can offer advice, adjustment, and most these days are excellent at working through the mail. Pro number three, refurbishment. All mouthpieces wear with time. 
If you have a gem and start to notice problems after a year or two, such as difficulty finding reads or response problems, a mouthpiece maker can refurbish your mouthpiece, making it play as good as new or even better. I recently had an experience with this. My favorite mouthpiece is a Woodkowski Model B1. This mouthpiece has the most amazing response, intonation, projection, and tone of any mouthpiece I've ever played. I've used it for countless Dayton Philharmonic and Cincinnati Chamber Orchestra rehearsals, concerts, chamber concerts, recitals. I used it while subbing with Cincinnati Symphony and St. Louis Symphony Orchestras. I love it. Lately, though, I'd noticed that it was playing sharper and sharper, and I was having increasing difficulty finding reads. Nothing would play. I realized it had been about two years since I sent it to Ramon to be touched up, so I contacted him, explained my plight, and sent it to him through the mail. When he received it, he gave me a frank evaluation of the effect that countless hours of practicing, rehearsals, and performances had taken on my beloved mouthpiece. Or any mouthpiece for that matter. Lo and behold, when I got it back, it played better than ever. The center and core was back in the sound, the pitch was back to normal, it was as read friendly as it ever was. And I didn't realize how much my altissimo response was being hampered by the wear on my mouthpiece. I almost cried. It was so easy to play, it was almost sinful. My mouthpiece was back and it was better than ever. I've also had machine-made mouthpieces for students improved quite a bit by having them tweaked by a mouthpiece craftsman. I've linked an excellent article on Ramon Wachowski's blog about mouthpiece refacing and refurbishing. It's an excellent read, and I recommend you check it out. Pro number four, customization. A mouthpiece maker is not a miracle worker. If your fundamentals aren't solid, then a mouthpiece maker can't fix those basic problems. What they can do that the mass manufacturers can't is make minute adjustments to your mouthpiece that can elevate it from very good or even unplayable to very good or amazing, if you know how to work with a maker. Stick around. I'll hit these points at the end of the video. So, it sounds like handcrafted mouthpieces are perfect, right? Well, not so fast. There are two major cons I can think of. Number one, cost. Handcrafted mouthpieces are always more expensive, which is why they are not suitable for beginners and definitely more for advanced players and professionals. They're an investment. There are a few things to consider in the cost, however. First, the best mouthpiece makers are usually one to two person operations and they spend significant time and money on research and development to bring their creations to life. They don't have the endless cash that a lot of the big companies do. Second, the best makers are making a mouthpiece to order for you. Third, a good maker will be able to refurbish the mouthpiece for you, extending its lifetime, which could ultimately save you money or at the very least break even. It also saves the hassle of having to try a large number of machine-made mouthpieces to try and find a replacement, or worse, try to find a replacement if your current mouthpiece is discontinued by the manufacturer. I went through this when Van Doren decided to discontinue the Van Doren V13. Fourth, most makers will be able to tweak the mouthpiece for you for free when it is new and for a nominal fee after a period of time. It's best to discuss this with the maker and keep the lines of communication open. Fifth, I like to think of a handcrafted mouthpiece like a high-end watch. It will last forever, but does need servicing so that it will keep good time. On the other hand, a less expensive watch that you might get from one of those ads on Facebook is more affordable, but it will break down with time and is essentially disposable. So if you've gotten this far, you might be ready to take the plunge. However, working with a mouthpiece craftsman for the first time can be a bit overwhelming. I've worked with several, as I've said before. So here's some advice I'd offer based on my experience and the mistakes I've made. Number one, most importantly, when relaying your impressions to the maker, they should first and foremost be about how the mouthpiece plays and feels, not the sound. Focus on the points I mentioned earlier, response, blow through, and articulation. A good maker can soup up your mouthpiece so it's like a sports car rather than a Yugo. Besides, if you're trying the mouthpiece in an unfamiliar environment, you really can't judge the sound anyway. Try to get a good sense of the response, blow through, articulation, and hold of a mouthpiece, and you'll be much more successful. Don't ask for something like, I don't like the sound of my high A. Can you fix that? That's not how this works. Next, when testing a mouthpiece, have a variety of reads handy. Make sure you have new reads, well broken in reads, hard reads, and soft reads. You want to get a feel for how a mouthpiece works with the reads you like. 
Remember that once a reed is broken in, it's pretty much married to that particular mouthpiece and it might not work on anything else. You want to try new reeds on a new mouthpiece, as well as get a feel for how reed friendly the mouthpiece is. Make sure the reeds you try aren't too stiff or too hard because this can often mask the deficiencies of a mouthpiece. Most importantly, tell the mouthpiece craftsperson what you feel when playing, not what to do. Let's face it, you're working with a maker because they know a lot more about mouthpieces than you do, right? If mouthpiece making was as simple as scraping a reed, we'd all be doing it. Don't swim in their suit. For instance, appropriate comments when working with a maker might be, I find the Altissimo doesn't speak quite as easily as I'd like. Can we work on this? The mouthpiece is a little too free blowing. Can we add a little more cushion or resistance? This is a great start, but it feels a little bit stuffy to me. Can we do something about that? I love the sound, but it doesn't articulate quite as easily as I'd like. There is so much more to a mouthpiece than it's facing, the curve and the tip opening, which is what we usually concentrate on because that's what the major commercial manufacturers give us as points of comparison. If you tell the maker what you feel, they could work on the facing, but also the baffle, tip rail, or any other part of the mouthpiece that you might not have even considered. I had a colleague who didn't have a lot of success with mouthpiece makers or selecting mouthpieces because instead of relating what they experienced while playing, they would tell the maker what to do or go back to the same incorrect assumption. The most typical comment this colleague would give would be, I can't articulate on this, it feels too resistant, and I need a larger tip opening. This makes no sense. Making a mouthpiece tip measurement more open makes it more resistant. So basically, they were saying, this mouthpiece is too resistant, make it more resistant. Needless to say, this former colleague never had much luck working with mouthpiece makers, or even selecting mouthpieces, which is unfortunate. Relay your impressions of the mouthpiece to the maker politely and let them decide what to do with the mouthpiece or how to make it better for you. Tip number four, don't be afraid to speak up. If you're feeling something you're unsure of or have a question, make it known politely. The maker is not a magician. They can't read your mind. They can make assessments by what they hear, but they can't be inside your mouth to judge what you're feeling. Number five, be patient. It may take a few tweaks to get a mouthpiece just right. To be fair, my favorite mouthpiece, the Wodkowski B1 I mentioned earlier, hasn't been tweaked at all except for maintenance touch-ups. It was perfect direct from the maker to me. Other mouthpieces I've had from the same maker, we've tweaked a bit. Next, don't forget to be polite. Working with a mouthpiece maker can sometimes be a bit nerve-wracking, but remember, if you're working with a good maker in person, then they want you to be satisfied when you walk out the door. Although at times, emotions can flare, try to keep a cool head and be respectful and polite. If you're corresponding via email or text, always be civil and respectful. They'll appreciate it, and you'll feel better too. And finally, remember not all mouthpiece makers are equal. Just as there are good doctors and bad doctors, good mechanics and bad mechanics, the same holds true of mouthpiece craftsmen. So do some investigating. Most have websites or are happy to speak with you on the phone. So I hope that answers some questions in your mind about machine-made versus handcrafted mouthpieces. Are you more interested in working with a mouthpiece maker now with this information? What are you playing on now, handcrafted or machine-made? Please sound off in the comments below. I look forward to hearing your opinions and engaging with all of you. Please take care, and I'll see you in the next one.